Hey everyone, Louis V here from Vinyl Latte, sharing with you some of my latest record finds. We're gonna be diving deep into each album, talking a little bit about the history, but we're also gonna talk about the pressing as well. So if you enjoy all types of music, cause we're gonna be covering hip hop, rock, pop, soul, um, we even got some blues in here. We're, we're gonna be all over the map. So if you enjoy any type of music, I think you're gonna find something you like here at the cafe, so stick around. Okay, the first one up is Most Daft. This is the Black on Both Sides album. This is the debut album from Most Daft, originally released in 99 to critical acclaim. It actually certified gold, and in my opinion, is an essential album for the late 90s, early 2000s hip hop scene. Now, this is part of the Interscope Vinyl Collective. This is the 25th anniversary limited edition. There's only 3,000 of these companies made. They actually have a little foil stamp here in the back corner. This is number 2744. Um, pressed on translucent black ice vinyl with a clear stripe. Um, if you're gonna go ahead and give this a spin, I would check out the songs uh, Miss Fat Booty and I would also check out Mathematics. A uh, gatefold jacket, custom printed sleeves, lithograph insert of the original cover art. My opinion, it is a five out of five. It sounds fantastic, very dynamic. Uh, definitive pressing for me uh, for this album. Okay, keeping in the hip hop realm, we're gonna talk about Thug Life. This is volume one. And this was a group that was started by Tupac. Now this album was released in 1994. That was two years before his death. And this kind of came out, uh, if you're looking at his catalog, this kind of came out right between Strictly Four and Me Against the World. Now, despite its name of the of the album, the they only ever released one album. There was never a volume two. Um, when it debuted, it debuted at number 42 on the Billboard 200. It's certified gold. Uh, what's interesting about this particular album, though, is that Thug Life was never supposed to be like an actual group. It was supposed to be a, like a compilation album representing um, or covering many different rappers, and they were all supporting a movement. Now, when the album first was recorded, Many of these songs were deemed too controversial and then later were released after Tupac's death. Um, now this album only has 10 tracks and what's wild is that two of those tracks are just, they're basically Tupac tracks. And then two of them do not have Tupac on them at all. So uh, kind of a little weird there. Now the songs that I would go ahead and give a stream if you're interested is Pour Out A Little Liquor, one of my favorite songs off the album. Uh, How Long Will They Mourn Me, which is a great song too. And kind of really in a way, when you think about that song and you're you're thinking about Tupac's life is a little bit chilling, to be honest with you. Uh, Cradle to the Grave is also another song that's worth giving a spin. Now, this was also part of the Interscope Vinyl Collective. It's a limited uh, numbered edition. They made 4,000 of these. This is 3704, comes with a gatefold, and this is an alternative art cover. Uh, the vinyl on this one is an opaque gray. Now, it's the same plates as the 2019 UME Europress, which I have. Um, this is the same plates as this one. And I'm gonna tell you, they sound the same to me. I did back-to-back -back play tests on this. I had a hard time determining which pressing I was actually looking, uh, listening for. So my feedback on this is that this is, they both sound fantastic. If you only have the US pressing of Thug Life, this, the, uh, the Interscope Vinyl Collective is a great way to get your hands on it. If you already have the 2019 Euro Press, I don't think you really need the, the Interscope unless you want the fancy artwork or just a member and you're collecting this series. That, that's gonna be up to you. Okay, next up is Lonnie Liston Smith and the Cosmic Echoes Reflections of a Golden Dream. Now, these performances recorded in 1976, and this is like soul jazz, kind of inching towards funk with this opening track, which is Get Down Everybody, uh, It's Time for World Peace. Now, that 
track is also quite interesting because it features Lonnie as a lead vocalist, which quite frankly is just very rare for him in his music to be as a lead vocalist. So it's kind of an interesting way to kind of open up the album. But then after that, this the tracks just sort of move towards this more meditative music uh, until you get back into funk with A Beautiful Woman. Now this particular one is the 2023 UK pressing on Flying Dutch, Dutchman's label. Um, Sound-wise, it's it's a solid four out of five. Uh, it's a good pressing, probably just not the most definitive pressing uh, out there, but four out of five for me is a, is a pretty solid, pretty solid record. Okay, the next one is one that I pre-ordered and I was super happy when it finally came in. I rushed over to my local store, picked it up and dropped it on a turntable immediately because this is an album that I remember listening to when it released back in the 90s and that is 10,000 Maniacs. This is MTV Unplugged. Um, of course, this was recorded in 93. It was a live album. Ended up going triple platinum. Uh, it, it spawned a hit because the night, which was a uh, Patti Smith and Bruce Springsteen uh, song, and this is the this just came out not that long ago, maybe a couple weeks ago, maybe a month ago. Well, depending on watching this video, it's a 24 US release. It's two LPs in a gatefold, and this time they include some bonus tracks on here. You have uh, "Let the Mystery Be," Dallas and Jolene. I think they do a great job covering. Jolene. Um, it's pressed at Memphis Record Pressings. It's a solid pressing. And to me, this is a five out of five. It's quiet where it should be. It's dynamic. It sounds great. And it just brings back all those memories listening to this album back in the 90s. Okay, keeping with the 90s nostalgia, we are going to go and dive into Jamiroquai. Traveling Without Motion, a great album for a lot of folks. This was Jamiroquai's third studio album, sort of his breakout album originally released in 96 in Japan and then ended up releasing in the UK shortly after. And the inspiration behind this, as you see on the cover, is really about cars, life, and love. When this came out in the US, I think it hit 24 on the Billboard 200. It came in second in the UK. And the tracks on here that hit the waves was Virtual Insanity, Cosmic Girl, and of course, um, Traveling Without Motion was also another one. Uh, but also to All Right was probably another great song. So I think those fours are the song. I, I don't know if Traveling Without Motion actually ever made it as a breakout single. I think that was just really Virtual Insanity, Cosmic Girl, and All Right. But I like Traveling With Motion, so I'm, I'm going to throw it in there because I can. Um, they think all of those, those three that I just mentioned, though, I think they were all top 10 singles in the UK, which is really, really awesome and amazing for them to do that. But what really pushed this album uh, to stardom is when Virtual Insanity came out on MTV as a music, music video. It drove the sales 8 million worldwide, ended up getting the Guinness World Record for best selling funk album. Uh, it's just really cool. Uh, this album was also the final re album that you had Stuart Zendered on, Zender on, who is their bassist. He quit two years later before they came out with anything else. This particular pressing is the We Are Vinyl um, label, which is basically uh, music on vinyl, just more of a easily approachable uh, pressings from them. It's 2017 U, uh, uh, Europe pressing. Two LPs, gatefold, 180 gram, sounds wonderful. Just like any other music on vinyl record does. Five out of five for me. I can't, so I, I'm going to be honest with you. I I already have a pressing of Jamiroquai's Traveling Without Moving. I'm going to sell it. This is, to me, this is the, the album. This is the definitive copy. If you're looking for the definitive copy of this album, check out the We Are Vinyl pressing. I don't think you can go wrong with it. All right, we're getting a couple albums deep now, and I'm trying to find my spot as I just kind of moved around. If you follow this channel a lot, and hopefully you are subscribed, you'll probably notice that things are a little bit different now. A little bit more dramatic lighting, a little bit different camera. Um, I'm trying to still figure out where I need to be. And you might see me look off screen occasionally because I have a little 
uh, video recording, I could see myself now record so I know if I'm in frame or if I know if I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, you know, showing you the lights. I don't want to show you the lights. I want to show the album. So uh, until I get sort of situated with the new setup, just bear with me here. But let's dive into the next one, which I just teased. This is Elliot Smith. This is Roman Candle. This was their uh, his debut album. Now, it was recorded in 93, released a year later. This is very lo-fi. Very acoustic sound, lo-fi. Smith played each instrument. He recorded it on his own four track. Um, he also used a Shore, I think it was an SM57 and a Radio Shack dynamic mic to capture all the sound on this one. Um, and it, he did it in a way that was like, it, he never intended this album to be released. But after the label heard the album, they pushed Smith to release it, which they ended up doing. Um, it features a couple, I think, emotional tracks where you see more of the vulnerable side of Elliot. You got Condor Ave and No Name Number One. That's that's what it's called. You got No Name One, Two, Three, and Four on this album. So uh, that's fun. Uh, this particular pressing is the Experience Vinyl. It's on Yellow Candle Splatter Vinyl. I think they only made. 500 of these, uh, it's not numbered, so I don't know, but I think they only made 500 copies of these. And it, it's a five out of, or four out of five for me. Uh, it's a good album if you have a chance to pick it up. Four out of five. Okay, next up is a rock album that quite frankly, I'm not sure how many rock fans are familiar with, but should get familiar with, and that's Aaron Jones. This is the fourth studio album, Chronicles of the Kid, uh, and this has a lot of influences on here. You're gonna hear Hendrix, Freddie King, BB King, uh, Kurt Cobain, you're gonna hear Rage Against the Machine, and the beat side, you're gonna hear influences from hip hop stars like Dr. Dre. I mean, this is a mix of, of just good beat, good rock, good influence in a music production. Awesome, awesome, awesome rock album. If Aaron Jones isn't a rock star in the next couple years, something happened. This man, every time he releases an album, just tends to get better and better. Um, I mean, this is this to me is, is somebody that should be on your radar if you love rock music. Now, this particular album is a 2023 release. This is also one from Experience Vinyl, limited to 500 copies. Uh, and it's on gold vinyl, actually looks really, really pretty. And it's another four out of five release for me. Um, the biggest takeaway from here, folks, is go ahead and at least give yourself a stream of um, Aaron Jones's, uh, any of his albums, quite frankly, but Chronicles of the Kids so far for me is the, my favorite album from him. Okay, next up, we're getting into more heavier stuff with Skid Row's self-titled album. Uh, this is also the debut album, originally released in 89 on Atlantic Records. It was recorded in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. It was released to kind of mix critical reviews, but it did peak at six on the Billboard 200, and it got five times platinum. So. Obviously, people like the album. Um, so there is some really killer tracks on here, to be honest with you. Youth Gone Wild, 18 in Life is another great song, and so is I Remember You. And I think they were the three singles that got released out of this album. Um, and all of those really, uh, w w really helped the band as all of those um, songs, so all three of those were played heavily on MTV. I mean, you talk about heavy rotation with records, it was heavily rotated on MTV. Now this is a 2021 US press on purple translucent vinyl, 180 gram. It's a Friday music release and it's autographed by Rob Afuzo, who is their drummer. Um, audibly, this is another four out of five record. Uh, it's one that you definitely wanna just drop the needle and crank up and just get lost into the Get the heaviness of the album. Okay, the next album is almost too sexy to show on YouTube, but I think we're gonna be all right. And that is Carly Simon's playing Possum. Ah, uh, man, Carly, man, she she's, uh, you know, she knows how to make an album cover, I suppose. Um, yeah, let's talk about this. This was her fifth studio album. It was the third consecutive album to hit the top 10 on the Billboard pop list. This is a classic pop rock sounding record. And you have some great contributions here. You have Ringo Starr, James Taylor, Andrew Gold. You got some cool um, 
singles that came out of this one. Uh, Attitude Dancing, I think, was probably the most popular one. And then After the Storm is also another great song. This particular pressing is a 75 Pittman pressing. It's a three out of five. I'm gonna be honest. It's a three out of five. If you could find a better pressing of this album, I definitely would. I snagged it because it's in great shape, although it should have been in better shape. Um, it was supposed to be near mint, near mint. Uh, but when I received it, uh, some software around the edges, ring wear around the outside, a lot of light scratches and abrasions on the cover. But more importantly, I know you don't play the cover, but the record also, just tends to have some surface marks and some needle drop like i don't know it's just it's not what i would classify a near mint record and i gotta be honest with you folks as i put this away and i'll share some of my pain with you is i'm noticing that more and more on discogs i'm noticing more and more records being listed as near mint and when i get them they're probably a solid vg plus and i'm just getting a little bit tired of buying records uh, paying the premium because a lot of the near mints are premiums above the BG pluses and not getting what I ordered um, Which is really going to lead me probably to stop buying near mints and just start buying uh, VG pluses from really solid sellers I, I don't know what else to do because I just feel like I'm getting taken advantage of out there I don't know how you guys are if you're if you're starting to notice a trend Where the quality of the records you're ordering are just not arriving as described I'm curious to get your thoughts in the comments below. Go ahead and drop me your latest Discogs horror story. I'm just kind of, I just want to know if I'm hitting a string of bad luck or if this is becoming a trend. It could just be bad luck, but this is like the third one I've got. Supposed to be near mint or mint and it has not been. Okay, we're going to get a little bit bluesy for you. I told you we have a something for everyone. I have, as I tend to get older now, I'm starting to appreciate blues more and more. And I've noticed that blues is something that I'm playing a lot more in the background. I'm listening to it a lot more after a long work day. There's something about blues that is just, it's grabbing my attention lately. And uh, in this series that we'll talk about here in a moment that's come out has really helped build out my catalog. Uh, the album I'm talking about first is the Albert King album. This is Livewire Blues Power recorded live in 68 at the Fillmore uh, Auditorium. These are, it's got a couple long form tracks on here. You got Blues Power and Blues at Sunrise are two of them as an example. Now this particular album is released as part of this Bluesville Acoustic Sounds craft series. It's got the nice little Bluesville Obi down the side. Uh, these are all fantastic. They're all cut from the original master tapes. Um, they're 180 gram vinyl. They're professionally mastered, mixed. They're pressed at QRP. I mean, these are basically essentially uh, acoustic sounds, analog production records just co-branded with Kraft. So uh, they sound phenomenal. It's a five out of five for me. Definitive pressing of this album for me. I don't have a need or desire to go find another one, uh, which has been pretty much the truth for me across the board of all of the Bluesville releases so far. This is my favorite non-subscription um, series so far. And, uh, and you can get them right from your local. I, I get these from my local. I don't even buy them online. I just pick them up from my local. All right, keeping it a little bit bluesy. Uh, also, the Lighten Hopkins with Sonny Terry. This is Late Night Blues. Uh, and this is Texas blues at its finest. It's stripped down. It's soulful. Uh, it was recorded in 1960, released a year later in 61. And when you drop the needle of this the very first time, you were introduced to Hopkins fluid finger picking with witty storytelling. That's what he's known for and it just carries through in this album. Again, this is part of that Bluesville release here. Um, pretty much the same stats as the other album, so we won't spend a whole bunch of time on that. Uh, it is another five out of five album for me, which is really nice, um, you know, it's it's hard to find good quality Lighten Hopkins records, so I'm so happy that they went ahead and reissued this and gave it the treatment that it deserved. So, uh, yeah, if, if this is something that is your taste, if you like blues music or if you like Lighten Hopkins and you've been wondering if this is a good album to pick up, if you have the cash, I would recommend it. 
Okay, this next one up is one I picked up at my local. It is the Sweet Inspiration self-titled debut album. Originally came out in 67. And if you're not familiar with this group, you are. You just might not know them by name. They were a, a highly in-demand female backup group who was used by Elvis Presley, Aretha Franklin, you got Wilson Pickett used them, Dusty Springfield as well, and I'm sure there's other notable artists that I'm forgetting to mention here. Now this album features mostly cover songs of the hits of the time, uh, but it did come out and peaked at number 12 on the Billboard Hot Soul albums. Now this particular pressing is a 68 pressing in pretty much near mint condition. Uh, the marks and stuff you see here on the outside are actually on the shrink. This still has the original shrink. The record looked like it was never played. So this was a pristine copy. It's one of the reasons why I picked it up. Uh, and it's on the Atlantic green and red label too. So uh, yeah, really, really happy to grab this one. Unfortunately, out of all the records I'm gonna be sharing with you today, this is the only one I haven't had a chance to listen to yet. I just got it recently, so I haven't had a chance to listen to it. I did get it cleaned, um, but I mean, I didn't think I didn't think there was a bunch of people rushing out to buy the sweet inspirations. I think more the story of who they are and that they're probably a band you're, or group that you're familiar with, you just don't know you're familiar with them, was more the story here. Uh, but check out their, heat, their hit single, Sweet Inspiration, where they have the hype sticker. If you, if you are curious, that's the one to go stream. Okay, getting into something a little bit different now. I told you music for everyone. How about Orgy's Vapor Transmission? Now this I also got at my local and there's a little bit of a story to this because I have actually been passing this up is months appropriate way to say it? Probably months. I think months. Because, I don't know, I just, it was the limited edition. This is the Best Buy edition with the purple and pink swirl. Limited of 500. We'll talk about that in a moment. But um, it, it just, I feel like you can get this album cheaper, but I never came across it. So anyway, I picked it up. We're, we're getting ahead of our, ourselves here. This is Orgy's second album released in 2000. And it sort of continues uh, Candy Ass's style with, uh, which was their first album with, with just, I think a little bit more maturity in the music. I think this it's, they dialed down some of the distorting guitar sound and they focus a little bit more on the lyrics itself. So the vocals pop more, um, which is fine, right? I mean, it, it, it's, it's a good way to mix it. Um, the songs on here that are probably worth given a spin would be um, uh, Fiction would probably be one of them. Uh, Opticon, uh, Ava would also be another one. So they're the three. If I'm sticking to three, they're the three that I would listen to. Uh, if you really want to know, just just play Side side A. <laughs> all of Side A is really good. So it's actually just a really great album all, all the way around. But like I was saying, this is the Best Buy release. This one runs a little bit pricier because he only made 500 of it. But it sounds really, really good. It, it just, you know, I don't know. I just was hesitant on it for a while because of the price point. But it's a four out of five for me. So again, a better than uh, above average pressing, just not not probably, you know, audiophile quality. But um, I wouldn't expect an audiophile quality pressing of Orgy Vapor Transmission. That's not why I'm buying it. So for me, it's a, it's a great record and I have no desire to find an alternative pressing. I think that's just going to be the one I'll keep in my collection. Okay, this next one, it has a little bit of story. I, I had some mixed playlists going on um, and Eric Robertson came on uh, and I think it was the song Righteous Life came on sort of my digital radio because nobody listens to AM, FM anymore. I, I don't even think of people listen to Sirius uh, XM anymore. They, they probably do. Obviously, they're still in business. All of them are still in business, but uh, none of the people I know listen to these services. Anyway, uh, I digress. So I'm driving to the record store. That song just comes up. And when I walk into the record store, they have like what's new has come in. You know that wall, like here's the new releases. And guess what's there? Eric Robertson, Walk in the Light, that has the song on it, Righteous Life. So I'm like, I don't know, there's a sign here. I'm, I'm buying this album. So I, I kind of bought this album just because of the coincidence that happened there. Uh, this is a gospel soul classic album. It features Call on God, Righteous Life, Walk in the Sun, Witness. I mean, this is, this is a, a 
um, you know, it, if you know, you know, right? It's one of those albums, if you're into this style of music, if this is your groove, you already know this album. No, this is an 82 pressing. It is the OG pressing of this, and it sounds okay. It's, to me, average three out of five pressing. Um, I, you know, and I didn't, I didn't do any research on this. I just picked it up because of the coincidence of it all. I think if I was a huge Eric Robinson fan, if I was a huge fan of this particular pressing, I would go f find a different pressing of it just to get a better quality. Three out of five, and that's after two ultrasonic cleans. So that's where I'm at with this one. Okay, next up is another kind of throwback to the nostalgia of the 90s. Some of you folks are going to know this band. Some of you are going to like it. Some of you are going to not, but it's okay. It's music for everyone. This is Jars of Clay. This is Much Afraid. This was their second studio album, and if you're not familiar, this is just classic 90s Christian alternative rock music, and this is sort of one of those albums is just, is just part of this scene of that music. Uh, being released in 97, you have Frail on here, and Fade to Gray uh, are the two songs that probably got the most radio play out of them all. This album did uh, earn a Grammy for the best pop contemporary gospel album. Uh, this particular pressing is a music on vinyl. This is the limited edition, 1,000 individually numbered copies on career, uh, I'm sorry, crystal clear vinyl, 180 gram of course. Uh, and what's great about this is that this is this the price of this album online is just disastrous. It, it, because of its rarity, because it's music on vinyl and people just follow the brand. And then there's sort of a kind of a do I want to say a cult following of Jars of Clay? Can I say that for kind of a gospel band or Christian music? I should say um, I don't know. There's a following for this. Um, so these are these albums like this tend to resell very high. I pinged my local and they still could get some from distribution. So I just got this from my local at regular retail price. It was that simple. Uh, so have a relationship with your local because maybe can it can just get you this album if, it, if they can still get a copy of it. Um, it's a music on vinyl. It's done well. It's a style of music in the late 90s that... Uh, you know, the music on vinyl treatment does does well. Um, yeah, five out of five for me. I don't think I'll find another copy of Much Afraid. Uh, I don't think I would want to hunt for one, quite frankly. I'm not, I like the album. I like Jars of Clay, but I'm not like a mega fan where I need to go like have every pressing and stuff. So for me, I have the album in my collection. I'm happy with it. And it's a good one to pick up if you can still get at normal retail pricing. Okay, this next album, I wanna share a little bit of a story with because I know people know the artist but might not know a little bit of the backstory. And I figured, let me take this as an opportunity to share some insight with you. But this is Nina Simone. This is a self-titled album. I'm gonna get to that in a moment. Uh, but I wanna talk a little bit about you, uh, Nina Simone. Now, Nina's real name is Eunice Kathleen Wayman. Uh, she was born in North Carolina to a poor family. She has seven siblings, and she enrolled in Juilliard School of Music in New York City. While she was there, she applied for a scholarship at the Curtis Institute of Music. And even after she auditioned, which was apparently a really well done audition, she was denied admission, which later, I think in an interview, she attributed the, attributed the denial to racism, which I think the school denied for the longest time, but then days before her death, they awarded her with an honorary degree. So there you go. I mean, that's saying guilty without saying guilty, right? Now, earlier in her career, Eunice played the piano in a nightclub in Atlantic City, and she changed her name while she was performing. This was her stage name to Nina Simone. Now, that was to disguise herself from her family who thought she was playing the devil's music. So that's what she did it for, was to protect the reputation of her family. She ended up becoming famous. Nobody knows who her real name is. Everybody knows her as Nina Simone, and the rest is sort of history. Now, this particular pressing is a 71 US pressing. It's on a budget label called Upfront. These are just affordable records. They're a discount record label that was started in the late 60s, I think 68 or 69. 
And what this is, is a, comp uh, a compilation album. Uh, it, it includes six tracks that were recorded in 61 at the Camera Tree in New York City, a couple other ones. They're very, um, you know, they didn't spend a lot of time doing the mastering or anything on this album. When I dropped a needle on this, it's very lo-fi. It, it's like listening to very bad FM radio. At least that's been my experience with it. I, I'm not happy with the quality of it. It's cool to have a piece of history like this. I'm glad I listened to it once. Uh, it's got some really cool songs on here. You get to hear her um, Cotton Eye Joe on here as an example. But if it's a if it's a few dollars, pick it up. But I wouldn't spend any more than a few dollars and just realize you're more buying this just to have it in your collection. But otherwise, I think it's a very skippable record. Um, to me, probably a, a two out of five. It's listenable, it's just why. Okay, we're getting into the very last album, and if you made it this far, please hit that like button. It really, really helps, and it tells me that you enjoy these types of videos where we dive deep in not only the pressings that I've recently picked up, but also a little bit about the artists and the music behind them and how these albums actually sound. Now, this last album I'm gonna share with you is an album that I already had. This is a different pressing, actually from a different country, and I was seeking this particular pressing because it is, in my opinion, a definitive pressing. And for albums that I like, that I really like, I try to go get the definitive pressing. Uh, so this isn't gonna be for everyone. You might not know who they are, but that's okay, because you get a chance to learn about new music, and there's nothing wrong with that. And this is Toto Cattuno. This is La Italiano. Um, Toto's real name is Salvatore, uh, Toto Cattuno. And he's an Italian pop singer-songwriter. He started out at the age of 19 as a drummer. And then at 40 years old, uh, he came out with a worldwide hit, this one, La Italiano. It's a, even though it's the name of the album, it's also a name of a track. Um, and in 1983, man, he blew up. Now. La Italiano it refers, translates to the Italian, and the song is about Italian immigrants highlighting sort of their common social traits at the time. And it became very favorable with Italian expats. Now what's very interesting about this is that Toto actually wrote the song for Adriano Salatino. And then Adriano said no, he didn't want to do the song because he felt like it was it, it called out lyrics that were too Italian and he just felt uncomfortable singing them. So then he was uh, wanted to get uh, Gigi Sabini to do it, who was an Italian TV impersonator. And uh, and then what ended up happening is, is that he was just really just talked into Toto, just do it yourself, it's your song. Um, and so he did and then sold millions of albums. So not a bad result, right? Uh, this is this particular one, the one I was searching in case you are a fan, this is the 83 German press. This is pressed by EMI. It's on the Kerosilo label and it's uh it to me is the definitive pressing. I don't think you can get this album in any other better um, pressing than this one. It's the German pressing. And for some reason, uh, Germany, I think, has pressed more versions of this than um, the Italians did. So uh, this is the one to get to me. The 83 German press EMI is the one that you want to look up if you're a fan of Toto Cattuno. Folks, that wraps it up. I hope that you really enjoyed this time. I know I enjoyed the time spending with you. I hope that you found this journey of going through some of my recent ads helpful and exciteful. Hopefully you learned something new and I turned you on to some new music. If so, uh, drop me what your favorite is in the comments below. I love when people say, hey, I never heard that album. I listened to that track that you recommended on Spotify or your favorite streaming service, YouTube, etc. And uh, and you know now it's part of my playlist. I always love those stories. So if that happened to you through this uh, video, go ahead and drop those comments below. I'm gonna get a cup of Joe, and I'll see you on the next video.